Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now, take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. After more than 280 episodes, we have fantastic guests. Today we go to Singapore. It's in the morning. We have David Tai with us. Welcome, David. And I want to read a little bit from your fantastic biography. Obviously, I'm interested in completed three Ironman triathlons, two challenge family triathlons. We need to know what that is. And more than 40 full marathons, including the marathon majors and numerous half triathlon and half marathons. And you're a competitive coach in swimming, running, triathlon with national youth and university teams, motivational and life coach with youth and adults, leadership and professional coach with executives, health and wellness coach, and on your LinkedIn, I found out also on plant-based philosophy that you're using. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What is the most exciting that you do these days? Right now, at this current moment, I am focusing a lot on intrinsic health. And it's not just about nutrition. It's about the wellness that comes from within. And I'm incorporating that into my coaching paradigms now with my clients. But I, I don't do it as an academic. I do it as, as an example. That means I myself will be doing it. That means I'm also a practitioner in this area about wellness, my health, uh, my well-being, and what, what the things that I feel that would but let me resonate or vibrate at a higher frequency. And, and I carry it over into my coaching coaching platform with my clients. So you're the role so, model for everybody. You're practicing what you're preaching, basically. I find, personally, it is, actually goes way back. When I was coaching as a sports coach, I find that it is so much easier to, to encourage your athletes to be physically fit and to be mindful about their nutrition if you yourself are doing it or else it becomes like uh, don't do what I do just do it because it's your unfortunately I saw a lot of sports coaches have a tendency there's a mismatch in the way they share their philosophy and but they are not practicing it themselves to me that's not gel well with me I feel that to do it myself it's easier for me to convey the message to them and say that why i think this matters all right it's not so much about whether i've done the sport myself or i've gone into this performance sports myself it is more of right now i'm still doing it all right i may not be as fast as them I'm, i cannot mm-hmm. even compete with them however the way i am being reflects what i say I could not agree more with you. I mean, we both have done marathon races and we know how hard it is, but I feel like I can talk about it. And it's not so much that one event, it's also about the training and it's the mindset and it's getting to that day and getting to that day healthy and with a healthy mindset. I'm with you on that. Mm-hmm. It's so important. It's not like a sports performance. It's not a... It's not an overnight sensation, Mm-mm. all right? <laughs> mm-hmm. It is uh, something that is an ongoing process. Mm-hmm. 
and on the day itself where you need to compete and everything will fall into place in order for us to make sure that everything falls into place that it has to be ingrained into your whole psyche your whole system your body is going into that the habit of doing it then the performance will will happen of course the outcome can be anything but that when you go to the start line you're as good as ready when i see use the word ready means to say it's very subjective all right it, 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 there's no like are you ready you say everybody say are you ready well and <laughs> well whatever i've done i'm there and how did it all start for you were you active as a child or if i were to recall my teenage days i mean even down to go back i basically i'm quite an outdoor person and i go maybe outdoor in a way i can keep still <laughs> you just want to go out and uh, run around and the good thing is that in our the younger days when we were kids we had a lot of kids in the neighborhood and we like to go out and play with them and and we go cycling we go running we just play we play ball in the backyard the sort of things is It, it became a lifestyle for us. As I move into teenage years, when you go to school, you find that there is a natural progression into wanting to do more outdoor and sports thing. I'm not really one of the high performance in terms of sports performance, but I've always been very interested. Besides sports, I've always been interested in the arts. Okay, I'm also quite creative, but somehow I just. do what i need to do along the way you know so <laughs> so you've done three ironman races and 40 marathon and two challenge family triathlon tell us more about what is two the challenge family triathlon the ironman and the challenge family are actually brands branded ah. me but they have the same distance it's just that when we talk about ironman because they have been more established in terms of that that long distance triathlon mm -hmm. i managed to get a slot in challenge rock which is in germany mm -hmm. and challenge rock is actually the biggest in terms of field size bigger than the kona ones it is tremendous the way it's being organized and it feels it just feels good to know that you are so part and parcel of the biggest biggest long distance triathlon in the world they are actually bigger than kona is just not as well known now it is because they have caught up in terms of its the uh, branding and a lot of people are now they have a choice they can do an ironman series or they can do the challenge family series all right okay. in the, all over the place yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. anywhere around the world you can just pick whatever but you still get the same you get the same challenge the same distance the same support good i did um half men and that's also different than half ironman some organizations they just changed the name wow and yeah, tell us right. a little bit mm. about your 40 marathon races any inspirational stories for the listeners when i first started doing my marathon running it was all in singapore and so singapore we have it used to be called the singapore international marathon then they have the mobile marathon and they do it alternate years my first interest in to marathon was because when they used to run past my house oh. right and every time when there is a marathon on i would just watch over the window and I'd say hey, i'll do it <laughs> <laughs> and when i eventually got up to it which was very late i mean i'm a late starter i did my first full marathon when I was about 26 and, and it was painful because you I didn't get, get a lot of guidance I would just pick up tips here and there from friends who had done marathon and after that marathon I said that I'm not doing it again that's the famous last words for a lot of people first timers exactly but I got hope <laughs> I actually went back to it again after a couple of years I went back and I tried something and it became a yearly affair for me all right 
and ever been doing in Singapore most of the time. And it was only when I started getting involved with the organization. That means helping the organizers uh, run the marathon. And that's where I got to meet all the international runners from around the world. And I was inspired. I was inspired by all these guys who are doing amazing times. And I said, I've got so much to learn from them. And from there, I started to pick up and I, I pick up my training. I learn through trial and error, learn from them, tips and there. And I told myself that I want to do the Boston Marathon. And Boston Marathon was my first marathon major. Back then, they were 25. Then I, I was not chasing after the five. I was I want to do the Boston Marathon. What I did was I started training for a qualifying race, which I went to Gold Coast to do it. And when I did Gold Coast, I qualified. And I was the feeling was just over the moon. When I, I went, the following year, I went for the Boston Marathon and I was saying I'm liking it and not only that is becoming so part of me that I went on to pick up all the other marathon majors along the way. For the listeners tell us the major marathons. The major marathons now there are six before mm -hmm. the six are Boston, New York, Chicago, London, Berlin and Tokyo. Tokyo was the last one that was included in 2013. I completed my five, that time was just five, in 2012 when I did my London and I was like, I'm done with the mar marathon majors. There was, that time it was called the five world marathon majors and we got a certificate for that. Then when it included Tokyo in 2013, I didn't apply. I missed that first. I missed that first. Thing. Then I said, my friends and I who did all the five, we said, let's go for our six. And we applied and we got in in the following year in 2014. And three of us were the first three in Singapore to receive the six marathon majors in, for Singapore. Right now, there are probably about 100 over people in Singapore. Around the world, there are more, but... Uh, mm -hmm. You wow, congratulations. I have a few more to go, but it's it's an accomplishment and it's huge. And it's it's not so much about the medal. It's about the determination and the training and putting, it's a commitment. Yes, it is. As much as I love the World Marathon Majors, I'm actually doing other races as well. But I've done, besides this six, I repeated a few of them. I've done quite a number of New York. I've quite a number of Tokyo, London. I would like to do my Boston again, but I want to do it on the qualifying time. And it's more for the experience of the atmosphere. And I have taken this experience into a friend of mine. We started a business together and we started organizing tours to all these World Marathon majors and, and other run races around the world. We want to share our own experience and bring it to other people and give them a chance to experience what we experience and let them enjoy running for the love of it. Thank you so much for your time this morning. What are you taking away from this episode? Wonderful person, great energy, great determination, never giving up. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday, every Wednesday with interesting people. There's something for everybody. And Take It From The Iron Woman started out as a book. There is my journey from Switzerland to New York to Kilimanjaro. 